What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today have we got a video for you. Today we're gonna to be going over the new Springfield Echelon and kind of what it brings to the table by comparison to a lot of other pistols that are very similar. Now the Springfield Echelon is a new pistol for 2023. It actually came out a few months ago and we've done a little testing on it as you can see here. If you follow my channel at all, if you're a subscriber, you know we've done a first shot to this. And if you follow my shorts, you know we've done a lot of the testing on the actual short content. However, you guys get to see the full video today. We really put this through the ringer because I wanted to figure out if this gun was good enough to use for home defense or concealed carry. Now what is the Springfield Echelon? Well, it is a polymer frame striker fired pistol with a 4.5 inch barrel and a 24 ounce overall weight. It has a steel slide. It has a pretty decent flat face trigger. It has a light mounting system and it comes complete with a new and revolutionary optics mounting system. <laughs> With an MSRP of around 650 to 700, it makes it relatively affordable for everybody, even though it's new. But is it right for everybody? Well, that is what we're gonna find out today. Woo! I shoot. Oh shit, I really Twister! Like this. <laughs> Beautiful, Springfield Echelon, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into that though, I do wanna mention my Patreon supporters. We did buy this with the Patreon dollars and I really appreciate you supporting the channel. If you like the non-biased content, we try to make the most honest gun content possible and we make it for you and not the industry. And if you wanna help out with that, all you have to do is go down to the link in the description and sign up for Patreon. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS, it's a youth shelter. Those kids could really use your help, so please go down there and donate to those kids. Now the history of the Springfield Echelon is a bit interesting. Like a lot of other imported guns from Springfield, it is actually made by HS Products. If you're unfamiliar with them, they make a couple other guns you might be familiar with, like the Hellion, also known as the VHS-2. Springfield wanted to replace the XD and the XDM with a modern pistol without a grip safety, so they went back to the well and had HS Products whip them up this, with a little bit of input from a lot of great shooters, including Rob Latham. Now the other thing they wanted to separate it from the XDM and from a lot of the pistols in the pack is going to be the COG system. It's very similar to the fire control unit from SIG where you can actually take the entire inside of the gun out and replace it and put it in a different frame so you can get larger or smaller frames, uh, higher or lower capacity, and bigger grip sizes as well. So not only do you have the back straps, but you also have full size grips and small grips that you can buy and just replace the COG. Very cool in my opinion. Now because it is a chassis gun, it also does come in not just the gun, but it comes in a lot of different variations and you can actually get a kit with several different grips with it or you can get it right from Springfield. Now this gun was in production for over two years and they actually got their name from the Spartans. Now the philosophy of use behind this gun is simply a duty gun. A do-it-all, military, law enforcement, home defense, and concealed carry type of pistol. They wanted to compete with guns like Glock and M&P and I think they've done a good job so far and we will be doing a direct comparison later in the video. I like polymer frame striker fired pistols for this because they have a single trigger pull unlike double single action so it is really good for new shooters. On top of that the four 4.5 length works great for a carry gun and it also gives you enough velocity and hitting power to work for a duty gun or a home defense gun. Capable of putting a light on for home defense or concealed carry or taking the light off to make it a smaller package to carry as well. And you can also use force multipliers. We do have the brand new Trigicon RCR and we also have a torture test of this optic if you're interested in seeing that. We also torture the gun right along with it. You'll be seeing a lot of the footage in this video though. Now the cool part about the COG or the fire control unit is it doesn't actually weight the gun down quite as much as something like the M17 does. M17 coming in at about four ounces heavier than the Springfield Echelon, although they do the exact same thing. 
Now we did accuracy test this, reliability test this, and shoot it pretty much as fast as we could. And I can tell you that we definitely tested the optic system. So if you're unfamiliar with this optic system, it is called the Variable Interface System or VIS because everything needs an acronym. And it is a self-locking pin system that allows you to put almost 30 different red dots on. Now initially I was very concerned about this because it does seem like you have a lot of space between each of the sides of the dot, no matter which dot you use. However, in actual testing, we did about 100 rounds and then a drop test and then 100 rounds and then a drop test for about 1,000 rounds. So we did about five or six shoulder height drop tests on the concrete and another five or six 10 foot drop tests on the gravel. And in my experience, we lost no zero in any of those tests. So uh, I'm gonna keep it at my head, it'll be 10 foot drops. 10 right, foot do two drops. of them. Okay. See how that goes. Nothing's broken, no scratches on the glass. See, it's getting quite the impact today. Okay. That didn't sound good. It's fine. Two. Oh boy. That was right on the glass. I turned her light on. Fine. So I would say that not only can you put a lot of optics on this, but at least in my experience with this sample size of one, it seems to be reliable and it seems to hold zero pretty much no matter what you do to it. We even drugged this with my truck for a quarter mile. You ready? Yes, sir. Now, especially with something interesting like the new Trijicon RCR, as you can see there, it uses a, an interesting torque screw situation there. I was really concerned, but again, worked very well. And the nice thing about the optic system is that it's so low that it does co-witness with standard sights. So the days of you buying suppressor height sights and them getting in the way of your optic are over. Speaking of the sights, you can see there it's very high quality. We have an HD front night sight with a uh, white U-notch on the rear. Now I don't love the U-notch, but most people do. And for close range shooting, it is very fast and very effective. Down here we have really good uh, serrations on the gun that's covered in mud. You'll see why in a minute. This is how we test guns in the Honest Outlaw Ranch. It does allow you to have a good grip on the gun even in adverse conditions. Good undercut under the trigger guard with a dual undercut, which is something you only usually get with like 2011s and stuff like that. I think their mindset of having sort of competition features that don't hamper reliability increases the speed of this pistol over some other guns in its class. The optic system not only worked well, but the light system worked well too. Sometimes lights have a tendency to fall off or run off in testing, and we use this Surefire X300 in all the durability and reliability tests, and we had no issues there. Coming up top, it does have a very cool gasp pedal kind of system on the side of it, which is very unique. Reminds me of the old days when you had to send your Glocks in to get that. Now you can get that with the Springfield Echelon right away. So if you like to drive with your thumb, you can do that. Coming over the top is also very easy on the Springfield Echelon because it does probably have some of the best serrations in the business.
So if you have an optics gun, it is nice to load the magazine and then come over the top because instead of going to the rear, a lot of times you end up banging the shit out of your optic and you do increase the likelihood that you will lose zero. However, in my experience, you can pretty much beat the shit out of it and keep going. But the front uh, serrations do make the gun actually faster because instead of loading the gun and rolling the gun over and pulling, if you load the gun like that, come over the top, you can get right back on the gun. And that's something I like to do in USPSA. So that's something I like to do in my self-defense training as well, if I'm able to, and the Springfield Echelon allows me to do that with those awesome serrations. Now it does have a pretty good trigger as well, flat face with a pretty decent pull out of the box. However, after you shoot about 2000 rounds through it, it smooths out a great deal. You can see here, very nice pull probably about four, four and a half pounds, and then a very slick reset, allowing you to get rapid fire shots out very quickly. Now let's get into the reliability, because it wouldn't be a self-defense gun, it wouldn't be a concealed carry gun, unless it was reliable. I have a very stringent reliability test where I usually take a gun and I put it through a thousand rounds of different types of ammunition, and if it doesn't go 100% through a thousand rounds, I generally hamper on it. However, since this being a new gun, and touted as being one of the best guns in the world, we were a little harder on this gun. How long are we leaving this bad boy in there for, honey? Not long. I just kind of want to see if I drag it on the bottom of the pond and it gets a bunch of mud and dirt in it, if uh, the enclosed optic will hold. We just did a ton of drop testing, and I wanted to see if not only would it keep the water out, you know what I mean? Yep. If it's fully submerged, it also kind of helps uh, test the uh, echelon a little bit, too. I'm fishing for polymer guns. Let's see if I get one. I feel like the fucking crocodile hunter. The frogs are probably like, what the hell? Oh, look at that. It's a Croatian pistol. <laughs> We've caught a Croatian. Not to offend anyone. That's just what it is. Jesus. It's pretty icky. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Today, we're gonna stick it in the sand and we're gonna stick it in the mud and see how it works in uh, adverse conditions. So we're gonna use 10 rounds in stock magazines each. We have them loaded up with blades of brass and I do have a barrel plug in the barrel because I don't want it to explode in my face because I like my face. It's not that pretty, but it's the only one I have. So we're gonna stick it in there and we're just gonna rub it around. We're gonna pour a bunch of sand on it. We're very mean. Like if you got in a gunfight at a kid's playground or something, or maybe you're using this on duty, or maybe you deployed and got to buy your own gun, or maybe you just live in Arizona. Either way, we will see how it runs. Not very well, I bet. Yep, sand kills guns like crazy. That's pretty good though, that's pretty good. The Croatian monster strikes again. All right, now we got all kinds of sand and dirt in there. I kind of fucked up and I put it in there with an empty magazine. We got a bunch of sand in there that we wouldn't have normally had. So uh -oh. we'll run it out here real quick and then we'll stick the mag in, make sure it runs and we'll do it again with a loaded gun. You can see there. Maybe you're having a not so relaxing vacation at the beach. You never know. <laughs> you never know what you All right, sand. There's no match for the echelon. So we're gonna load the mag up, stick it in the mud, see how it goes. I'm gonna get dirty, but I got a dirty mind. Might as well be dirty. All right. Oh, boy. oh my god. Oh, that's a fucking test. That is nasty and thick. I'm gonna stand back. Oh my god. All right. Remember these days. No way. Into the mud it goes again. You know, we'll go the other side this time, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, go the other side. There we go, got it all nice in the trigger group. So if you're talking about how to kill a gun, that's it right there, trigger group. People are always worried about the slide and that is a big factor. But if you get stuff in the trigger group, man, it dies. So we'll see. Oh boy. There we go. Yep, we killed her. The mud did it. The mud tends to. 
Well, we're still sort of functional. All up in your mouth. Through the adverse conditions test, it went almost 100% until the mud, as you guys saw. We used uh, Blazer Brass for the majority of it, and we do want to thank our ammo sponsor, Manning & Sons, for that. I appreciate that. And we also used Federal 115 grain, Critical Defense, uh, SIG, I think, Elite Performance, Hollow Points, and we used a plethora of 124 grain and even some 147 grain hush. The gun also ran my Atlanta Arms very underpowered competition ammo. So anywhere from hot 124 grain to very low-powered 115 grain, the Springfield Echelon with the stock spring had no problems at all. And now we put sand, dirt, mud, uh, muddy water, frog shit, dust in it, and the gun just kept on running over and over again. And that would have been really impressive on just an iron sight gun, but the fact that we put extra weight on it, use an optic, and it still worked well, shows me that not only they did a lot of research on this pistol, but they also did that with force multipliers like the light and the optic. Because some guns really wilt when you put a light on, or an optic, it changes the actual weight of the reciprocating mass, or it changes the weight out in front of the gun, and you experience some reliability issues, where in my experience with this gun, you definitely won't see those. So we did the torture test, and on top of that, we left it sit for two days without uh, cleaning it because I wanted to see what would happen. And we did get a little spots of rust on the barrel there, but not much. In comparison to the Glock pistol we also treated this with, it was completely filled in rust. And as you can see here, the Echelon actually doesn't have very many uh, issues considering how much shit we've done to it. A couple thousand rounds, bunch of mud. This is actually the fire control unit or the cog or whatever they call it. And this is what you can take out of the frame and uh, put in different frames if you want. Very cool design, especially considering it's not very heavy like the SIG 320 is. Pretty impressive that it was able to run like this. As you can see, there's just sand, mud, and everything all inside where the trigger group was. Very impressive. We also had a bunch of stuff inside the striker channel, and it still ran all the way through all the testing. Along with the durability test, I wanted to make sure to check for cracking because I've had several guns not only crack in the slide, but crack in the frame from drop test. This gun was fully functional the whole time, didn't crack at all. On top of that, we did shoot it rollover prone to make sure the gun works on its side or upside down in case you're in weird shooting positions and the gun function 100% through those as well. Now I would say that the gun passed with flying colors on almost everything, but I would say a big weakness to this gun that a lot of people haven't pointed out yet that we did experience in the drop test and reliability test is gonna be the magazine base plates. The magazine, uh, the extension on the uh, 20 round magazine did break. The small one is actually broken too. The tabs tend to shear off inside the magazine base plates and what happens then with a big drop is that no matter what you do, they won't lock anymore and if you push real hard, you can actually push the paint the plates off because this locking tab no longer exists. Springfield Echelon and new Trigicon. <gasps> uh oh! Yeah, I told you what was going to break on that was the base plate. Magazines are meant to be disassembled, you know? Okay. So they try to get a good mix between being able to be disassembled and being durable. Right. Problem is, is these magazines are super easy to disassemble, so they are not like friendly torture tests. Okay. I think you actually broke the mag. But yeah, well, strike one. Now, lastly, we did do one-handed manipulations because I wanted to see if we decided to shoot it left-handed a bunch, if we'd have any limp wristing issues, and we also didn't experience those, telling me that Springfield did do a lot of research on their recoil spring weight. So it sucks to say, but there is one small Achilles heel to the Echelon, and that's gonna be the mags. Now, can you buy other mags? Yeah. Can you not drop it from 10 feet? Yeah, you can. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, if you have like five, six, seven mags and you do experience this, pitch it in the trash, get a new mag. That being said, it would be nice to see Springfield get a better magazine base plate design. I'm not sure if there's something to do with like copyright issues or anything on other designs, but there are better designs, including the Glock design, which is just simply a one push pull off, because the reality is these magazines are meant to be taken apart. 
apart. A lot of people say you can't take mags apart, but if you don't take mags apart, you're gonna have an unreliable gun if you shoot a lot, because you do have to clean the inside of the mags. Competition guys know that more than anybody. That being said, another issue we found with the gun is going to be the ease of takedown. Now I do like the takedown lever. Now if you're gonna be dunking guns in the mud, one of your best friends is gonna be a takedown lever like this. Super easy to grab a screwdriver, slide this down and pop the gun apart and clean it. Now when we do these adverse condition tests, if you have a system like this takedown lever, you can force this down and take this gun out and take it apart when it has a lot of sand, dirt, and mud in it and it does allow you to clean the gun out and get it back in a function. When we do these durability and reliability tests, I'll do the sand portion, I take it apart, I clean it out with a garden hose, I do it again and do it again and do it again. So you do get to experience what it is like to take a gun apart when it's full of mud because you get to do it like 10 times in a row. And if you have a system like this takedown lever, you're going to experience a lot more fun than you are something like the Glock. This is one of the real downsides for mud and sand and everything is that with guns like the M&P or guns like the Echelon, if you get mud and sand and they stop functioning, you can open them up and clean them super fast. This was an absolute nightmare. What happens is you can't grab these two and you get mud underneath, just like the last test we had. It took me, what, 20 minutes to get this apart? Something yep. like that Something inside? Like that. Yeah. This is old school and sadly that's the new. That being said, the biggest downside to it is the fact that the Springfield Echelon not only is relatively new, but they have a really poor manual. We did call them to ask them how to take it apart and put it back together just to make sure I was doing it right because upper disassembly is not in the manual. The cog disassembly is, but the upper disassembly is not. There are also no resources on the internet currently available to figure out how to do that. That being said, it's relatively easy, but I do like to know exactly how you're supposed to do it so I don't break little parts that I can't get, and then that postpones my review, and then I have to talk to that lovely customer service person that didn't know how to take it apart either. So if I call the company and I ask them for advice on how to take it down, I expect them to know how to take it down and I also expect them not to tell us that they don't release that information because that is what they told my wife initially, which seems kind of insane because if I wanted a duty pistol, I would want to know how to take the upper apart in case I, let's say, got mud inside the striker channel, which can absolutely happen. Because it did. Because it did. Now, as far as accuracy goes, there is mechanical accuracy and there's accuracy you can achieve out of the gun. The second one is generally what we talk about with pistols, since most people are not as accurate as the handguns they actually use. It's usually your finger that's wrong, not the actual machining of the firearm, in which case we generally talk about the interface with you and the trigger, that's about 90%, and then your interface with the sights is about 10%. So your ability to run the trigger straight to the rear without disrupting the sight picture on the Springfield Armory, at least in my experience, was very good. We Shot this at 50, 75, and 100 yards routinely and had no issues whatsoever making hits. Okay. Shoulder height drop. Right on the optic. Let's do two. Check zero, load it back up. My bad, my bad. Okay. Through that one, but that's all right. Drop two. Well, that's actually the third drop. Optic drop again. Okay, as you can see, it's getting beat up. Load it up, see if we retain zero. Good to me. 
It has a very light and crisp trigger and the optic system allows that one point of aim and it just makes it easy to hit and easy to look good with the gun. Now, a lot of guns can be accurate without having speed and a lot of guns can be fast without being accurate and a lot of guns can have both without having reliability. However, with the Springfield Echelon, we didn't actually see any loss in performance in any of the categories. It was very fast, it was very accurate, and it was very reliable, which is again, pretty tough to do for the $600 price point. Now, as you can see here, the trigger is really easy to use. I'll run it for a few times. And getting back to the actual reset is very easy because it pushes the gun, the trigger pushes your finger out and it allows that little forced reset that helps you get on the gun fast and shoot very fast strings up close. And that's kind of what a pistol's for in the first place. Now, a couple other things that help out with that is we do have a real high beaver tail on the gun. So you can see you can get really high up on the gun and you have a very low bore axis by comparison to something like, let's say a SIG 320, which sort of feels like a boat rocking backward every time you shoot it. It reminds me an awful lot of maybe something like a P10F right here, where as you can see, we're also very high up on the gun and it mitigates a lot of muzzle flip, allowing you to get shots off quicker. Another nice thing is the gun's very customizable if you choose to do so. If you have big hands, you can buy a big grip. If you have bigger hands than that, you can add one of the three included back straps. If you have small hands, you can use a small grip. And that's one of those things that I think is kind of understated unless you're in that I'm a real big guy or I'm a real small gal category. And if you're in one of those two extremes, this uh, system is very helpful. Now another thing I like is the full ambi controls that actually function out of the box. FN should really watch this video because FN's been trying to do an ambi magazine release for years and have never managed to figure it out, but this is how you do it. You can see here that after 2,000 rounds, after the mud, we did clean the gun out and look at that, the gun still works on the right side and the left side. We can drop the slide on the right side and on the left side. Now, a lot of people think that's supposed to be the norm, but you would be surprised how many guns I've had that have ambi controls that don't work as advertised. Now we'll do some quick size comparisons here, and I'll just bring out the Glock 19, or Glock 17, sorry, to give you an idea of what it looks like. Both of these have a 4.5 inch barrel. Both of them have a standard 17 round capacity, so it is actually a pretty good comparison. Now, it's kind of difficult to show you on camera, so hopefully you can kind of see that they're almost the exact same size and almost the exact exact same weight. Honestly, one of the most popular guns in history, one of the most trusted, so it's a pretty good one to copy. Let's show the P10F here, the full size P10C, and you can see, again, very similar in size. Uh, same size barrel and same weight almost exactly. So it's going to depend a lot on what ergonomics you like and what features you like because you're going to get about the same velocity, capacity, and performance out of a lot of these guns. Let's go with the m and I only have an m and compact here, but you get the idea. This is how it looks against the four inch gun. It looks half an inch shorter, because it is. 15 round versus 17 round. And then finally, we'll size compare it to the M18. And as you can see right there, if we include bore axis, the SIG is considerably taller with the exact same amount of capacity. So with all this testing and weeks of shooting, what do I think about the Springfield Echelon? Well, my answer might surprise you. Uh, still a sample size of one, but as a sample size of one, I don't think I've had a gun on the channel for the money that performed quite as well as this gun did. And I hate saying that because as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of Springfield as a company. I'm not affiliated with them at all. And I didn't get my gun from them. I went out and bought mine and I still experience pretty much exceptional performance. You have a gun that's for $600, can accept any optic on the market, can accept basically any light in the market, can be used as a duty concealed carry gun, and can be shot at distances from 50, 100, and 125 yards relatively quickly with pretty good performance. The answer is yes, the Springfield Echelon does live up to the hype. I really like this gun. I'm gonna continue shooting it. I'm gonna continue shooting it in this configuration and I'm gonna beat this thing up till it breaks. So if you wanna see a 5,000 round review, you can leave it in the comment section below. If you wanna see some direct comparisons to some of the other guns on the table, you can leave that in the comment section below as well. Let me know what you thought of this new review protocol. If you like the little more testing, if you like the standard 1,000 round review, let me know in the comment section below. And then finally, also let me know what you wanna see in our future torture tests. We've 
We've done the Echelon, we have the Glock coming up in a few weeks, and I'm open to pretty much anything. Right now I'm thinking maybe the M17, but you'll have to let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe, please support our Oklahoma shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.